So here we have the 2024 Kia Sorrento. Sorrento. <laughs> Okay, so now, now energy, 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 more energy, more energy. Okay, here we go. Here. What is up, internet world, and welcome to Accelerate. I'm Mike, he's Ian, and today we're bringing the killing it again, Sorrento. so close to quarter million subs. That's 250,000 for those that don't know what it is. That is a lot of people, but nothing in comparison to how many people watch this channel and do not subscribe. 7.7% .7 of all people that watch our channel subscribe. We have 55 million views on our channel. That is a lot of people. And 250,000 of you guys subscribe and the rest just don't. Yeah, thanks for subscribing. We truly appreciate all of you who continue to support this channel. We know it can be annoying to hear YouTubers ask for subscriptions all the time, but it truly does make a difference. So thank you. Now, if you're thinking, hey, I want to get myself an economical Kia that can fit three rows of humans. Well, here you have it. You don't have to spend the money on the big sibling, the Telluride. And if you're thinking about the smaller one, not the Santa Fe, Mike, it is the Sportage. Yep, that one doesn't come in a three rope. You only got this thing. All right, in the USA, the Sorento starts at about $32,000 in the LX trim. Above that is the S, then you have the EX, then the X-Line EX all-wheel drive, then the SX, then the X-Line SX all-wheel drive, wow, this is hard to say, the X-Line SX Prestige all-wheel drive, and then the X-Pro SX Prestige. In Canada, it's a bit more simple. The Sorento starts at $39,000 in the LX, and then we only have an EX, X-Line, X-Line Limited, and an X-Pro. Now this X-Line Limited that we have today starts at a price of 50,975 Canadian, and in the US, the closest matching trim would be the X-Line SX Prestige all-wheel drive. So in Canada, both the X-Line and the X-Pro give you 8.2 inches of ground clearance and the high utility roof rails. The X-Pro takes it a step further with all-terrain tires and 17-inch alloys as well as 4,500 pounds of towing capacity, whereas the one we have here tows about 3,500 pounds. Now in the USA, on the X-Line and X-Pro trims, you get a center locking differential. We couldn't find anything on the Canadian website about a center locking diff, and the button didn't exist in our X-Line test model. So we're assuming we're not getting that in Canada, but if you know otherwise, please let us know in the comments below. So for the Sorento, you can get the hybrid as well as the plug-in hybrid version. Interestingly enough, they did not update the hybrid for 2024. They left it the same with no changes to the interior or exterior. Now there's two gas versions you can get. One is a two and a half liter engine that makes 191 horsepower and 181 pound feet of torque. And then you have this, the turbocharged gas version. It's a two and a half liter four banger that makes 281 horsepower and 311 pound feet of torque. Let's see how fast it is. Let's give it some jam. Put the ground in D, I'm in sport mode and let's go. Boom, 6.51. All right, guys, we do this mostly for fun, but that was our Accelerate 0 to 60 test. That puts the Kia Sorento just a bit slower than a Ford Escape ST line and just a bit quicker than a Chevy Colorado Z71. What you don't see there is that the Sorento went a bit quicker than the six cylinder Kia Telluride, which we tested last year. Mind you, it was rainy and snowy when we did that test. So really, these are pretty on par. Let's talk about the differences between the last one we had here and this guy. Namely, these headlights. They are now vertically stacked as opposed to being horizontal. They have this design that we saw in the EV9 and Kia said it's inspired by a Constellation star map. 
Yep, you got it, right here. They now have these bolstering pieces on the front of this grill. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you guys can guess, what other brand has seven individual pieces on their front grill? You get a prize. You get a prize. You get a prize. You get a prize. Now, take a look at these wheels. They are very EV style inspired. There's a lot of inspiration going on with this Kia. These wheels scream EV, and this front end also screams EV like the EV9. Now moving down from there, you'll notice this is exactly the same as the 2001 we reviewed. There's really no difference. You have very easy doors to open. You have the key in your pocket. You walk up to the vehicle. You touch the handle. It unlocks. You walk away from the vehicle while touching this button as you walk away it locks. And moving to the back, you will see a lot of piano black trim, including this massive roof rail. Very, very substantial feeling, and of course you have that height, so you can stack it up with all the off-road gear you'll be taking with your X-Line. <laughs> Nobody actually off-roads. Seriously speaking, it's a Kia. You're gonna buy one of the other vehicles that have seven things in their front grille. But move your eyes lower, and you will see you have padded, or carpeted inner fender liners, which means when you're inside the cabin, it should be substantially quieter than if it was plastic. Now, as we whip around the back of the Sorento, you will see it's pretty much exactly the same as the last version, with the exception of revising these taillights. It looks like a lamppost or some stick figure bending over, which I actually like. I like how this is modern. There's no real reason to change anything about this stuff here, which is what they had on the 2021, because it's just modern, enough. You do have a tinted rear glass, and if you're wondering where the wiper is, it's hiding underneath, which is where it's supposed to be, unlike some other SUVs. The Kia badge is right there, rear camera. Sorento, obviously, it is an X line, as indicated there. A lot of hard plastic, but it's aggressive, it's not basic, it does have a lot of flair, which other SUVs at this price point really don't. So if you're interested to find out how much room the inside of the Kia Sorento has, you have 44 inches worth of width, 44 inches worth of depth, and it depends on what you are stacking up high, including plants, you have about 32 inches worth of depth. Now, again, if you're interested to know if you can fit three people in the back or third row of the Sorento, the answer is no. There are two individual seats, as you can see here, and if you wanna lift them up, you simply just pull this handle and voila, they lock like this. So again, one seat per person and you have two seats back here. Now, if you're interested in knowing how to put the second row down, well, luckily for you, you do have two buttons on this right side. I simply hit this, that captain chair folds down, and on the left side, I hit the button and that captain's chair also folds down. Completely down. And yes, there's a spare tire. Front seat of the Kia Sorento. Okay, totally different than the old one. The old one felt archaic. This one has the 12.3 and 12.3 all clean with this curve style display. I love this trim. Kia, good job. Very, very thin vents. Pretty standardized Kia wheel we're all used to. This store does have memory seat on the seats and you also have this X line design embedded right there. I love the perforations in the seats. They are cooled and heated, all done by the toggles here. You've got three heated, three cooled on the passenger, and three heated, three cooled on the driver. When I look up, I have a massive panoramic sunroof, and of course, I do have aluminum pedals because I'm trying to get sporty with my paddle shifters. If you're wondering where you first saw this unique control panel for your HVAC and audio, it was done in the EV6. You know that little car that they called an SUV that was really quick? Yep, that one. Here's how it's done. I simply just slide my finger down and it toggles with your HVAC controls. Now it completely changes everything you see on this display. Slide up, you get all your controls for your media, so your track. Of course, your defrost buttons still stay, but when you slide it down, you have this whole right side that completely changes. You still have the toggles left and right, so you can adjust your HVAC controls. And then again, slide my finger up, and I can adjust my FM or my satellite radio. And yes, finally, with a 12.3 inch display, you finally have wireless Apple CarPlay. Nobody cares about Android. <gasps> 
You do have a wireless charger, two USB-Cs, a ton of storage all around the center console. Right here, two big cup holders, massive glove box that you can pull this little tray out. And if you're wondering where you can shift your drive modes and terrain modes, it's all done right here. You have normal, eco, sport, smart, and then on the terrain side, you have snow, mud, and sand. Yes, you do have hill descent, as well as an electromechanical parking brake, and a heated steering wheel that has two increments of heated steering wheel <laughs> and a heated steering wheel that has two increments of heat. So check out this key by Kia. It has an illuminated Kia little logo there when I lock or unlock it. Pretty cool. Wow. Now let's talk about the padding on the armrest and the door panel. Here's the armrest. Boom, boom. How does it feel? Pretty soft on my elbows. Important to note when you're looking at considering buying one of these Sorrentos. Whew. I almost said Telluride. Whew. I almost said Santa Fe. Whew. Can't keep up. On the handle, yes, very soft as well on the door panel. It's a little bit softer on the armrest than it is on the door panel, but still soft enough that your elbow will not be sore on this Kia Sorrento. And when you step into the X-Line Limited, you get access to the blind spot view monitor, which is in your driver's display, and it basically shows you what's in your blind spot using the cameras on the mirrors. As well, you get the surround view monitor, which is a 360 camera system, and it is one of the best ones out there. Kia, Hyundai, Genesis do a really good job with this technology. So let's get into the third row of the Sorento. There is a button on the top and a button on the bottom. When I hit the button on the bottom, this is what it does. It slides forward. I can simply just put my foot here and I can get into the third row. So let me show you how much room you have in the third row with the second row back. A ton of room. Now, again, I wouldn't sit like this. I'd probably have it reclined a little bit more, but even still with it reclined, look how much room I have. Now I'm five foot nine, and this is all the room that one person needs when you're my height. As far as storage goes back here, I do have a cup holder, a very deep storage compartment for let's say two bags of chips. And then of course I do have a plug, a USB-C on the left side here, as well as a USB-C on the right side there. I don't have any sort of sunroof here. It is completely closed off. The sunroof starts right here, which is fine for those in the second row, but it's okay, I guess, because I do have a window, not the biggest window, but I guess I also have a little speaker here for my entertainment purposes. So now I'm in the third row and I wanna get into the second row. Now obviously I can walk right through here. There is no console here hindering my movement to the second row but I want to try it by getting out of the vehicle and getting into the second row that way so I have a button on top here I hit this button boom slides out of the way it moves right to the front I can simply just jump out here do one of these guys pull this back to that position I was talking about and then show you what it looks like when I get in this position now here I am sitting I do have enough leg room again this position right here is where I was sitting pulling this vehicle in so I do have some leg room and of course I wouldn't be sitting this 90 degree ish I would probably recline it a little bit more to that interesting though is that this seat doesn't just recline the bottoms actually slide with it so I can pull this back and this does slide forward to give me more of that, you know, perception of sleeping on these captain's chairs. I can pull this down. What do I think about this? Pretty good. Same as pretty much every other minivan I've got into. Let's close these doors and I can show you where I can put my cups right there. There's a singular cup there and then a bottle underneath. So you have a two level sort of storage deal going on with this door panel. I do have two increments of heated seats on this captain's chairs and I do have sunshades right there again i talked about this when i was in the back you do have a nice big sunroof that does work really well for the second row if you're wondering where the plugs are the usb or usb c's there are one right here for the driver and then there's one right here for the passenger seat itself those are really designed for the people in the second row i know it's in the seat but it's really for me back here i do have some plugs back here what are they well the first one is a cigarette lighter and the second one is a full out three prong plug and if you're wondering how much power that plug can take well it tells you 150 watts right on the sticker and the seat also goes backwards and forwards it does have a very long long seat rail that like literally hits the front seat and then goes all the way back that's very impressive with these seat rails How's the shifting? Very Kia, smooth, doesn't even really exist. It's just buttery smooth steering, exactly what you expect out of a Kia. If you've never driven a Kia before, 
it's just very standardized, soft, smooth. The suspension is very forgiving. Steering is excellent. That's one of the, the biggest like check marks of any Kia I've ever driven all the way from, you know, when we first started reviewing Kias, they just have excellent steering. Where you turn, it goes very direct, almost German, but it's right back to center. You turn it, right back to center. Turn it, right back to center. It just does a very good job of keeping you on the road and feeling that premium feel that you'd expect out of most German cars. And other people in the comments will complain and say, why does everything have to relate back to German cars? Well, forever, German cars have just dominated steering. They just have, it's just the way it is. What else am I gonna tell you? Just the way it is. Shift gears, just very smooth. Doesn't, no hesitation out of this eight-speed transmission. This one, the old one actually looked really good. We filmed it in 2021 and I, I tell you, man, those looks were like forward. It was like very, very modern and just the lines and the design. And this thing also looks super modern. It's a lot more like the EV9 now. Interior, they've updated it completely. It doesn't look, doesn't have that weird center console piece. Just nice, big, flat panel here to give you all the information you need. Interior, seats, everything kind of expected of a Kia. Just a good job, man. People say that I work for Kia, but that is a lie. I just think they make a really good product. They just do. I'm not talking about any other drama people want to talk in the comments about different brands and how they are for customer service and how they catch fire and all that fun stuff. We're not talking about that. We're simply talking about getting in the car, driving it, and feeling it out. Feeling the fit and finish. Giving that overall feel and when you spend your money, because money doesn't go far nowadays. I'm sure you guys know that. So the moment you've been waiting for, what is the fuel economy like? Well, on this more powerful turbocharged two and a half liter, you can expect to get 11.7 liters per 100 kilometers in the city and 8.1 liters per 100 kilometers on the highway. So that's it from our review on this Kia Sorento. If you think this is a winner, let us know. If you think they haven't done enough for 2024, let us know. Do you think the 2021 is a better buy? Let us know. Or maybe you think there's another brand out there that is better than killing it again. Let us know. We'll catch you on the next one.